We have come a long way since Spendel hard drive. I remember a time when I spent about 250 some odd dollars to buy an 8 gig Mac store hard drive. And that thing was twice as large as the hard drive that was in my system at the time. Nowadays, you can get 8 gigs pretty much out of a Happy Meal. This right here is an MVNE. This is a newer kind of SSD. This is a set of chips instead of a physical spindle. And this is very similar to RAM. You're going to handle this the same way you were handling RAM. It inserts into a specific slot on your motherboard. Now this right here is PCIe Gen 4, but it is not the absolute fastest memory controller that Sam Brent actually offers. I tested that in a previous video and I found that this for price to performance ratio was actually a better deal than the plus version where the memory controller on it is actually faster. So let's get this open. It's a relatively simple process and we'll get it installed in project seven. This opens essentially like a deck of cards where you just pull the top open like that. Now I really like Sanborn's packaging here. This nice faux copper case, I think actually looks really cool. You could use this for several other things once you actually use the NVMe that's in here or, you know, just throw it away if you want. Instruction booklet that includes information on how to install. This is a shield protector. It is designed to keep the NVMe from moving around in the case itself. And then we have the actual chip. Now this is black foam. Black foam is a longer term ESD protected storage solution. So it's great to see that. And here it is. There are chips that run along the top here and there are chips and surface mounted devices here on the bottom. This installs extremely simply. We are going to install it in the proper slot. We are going to screw down one side. Now, sometimes there's heat sinks that go on top and you might be wondering, well, should I remove the sticker then? No, they have actually designed these stickers with that in mind. So this actually conducts heat relatively well. So you don't have to remove any of the sticker or the packaging. That means you're not chancing damaging the components or anything like that. And you can still get very good thermal connectivity out of this. This does generate heat. And there are people out there that are water cooling these. Uh, there's mining now that can occur on these kind of drives. So people are doing some things that might increase the temperature and, and the importance of temperature for these drives. But we're not going to come anywhere close to doing that kind of stuff. There are surface mounted devices, which means you need to be very careful. You don't want to snag any of those and you don't want to touch the pins. Again, there's grease on your fingers touching that gold can degrade the performance of your PCB. Again, always grab these things on the sides. See how I'm holding it? All right. With that, we will get the case over here and get it installed. With the 11th generation Intel motherboard and CPU combinations, this M.2 right here is the one that is connected directly to the CPU. That means that's going to give us the full 4X PCIe 4 lanes that are going to give us the best performance from our M.2. So this is exactly where we are going to install that new drive. We're simply going to use a screwdriver to remove this shield. Now, sometimes the screws will come out. Sometimes they have a stopper on the back. Either way, it's okay. If you accidentally unscrew too far, if it falls in the case, it's okay. Just gently fish it out and still you'll be able to continue. You can see here, I didn't undo that one all the way either. Okay. Now what I'm looking for, and I see it right there, this right here, is a thermal pad. This sticker on top is designed to come off. This pad will sink down into the NVMe drive itself on top of that sticker, and this will help pull heat away to this piece of metal. This is actually metal. I think it's aluminum. This will act as a good heat sink and give you the proper amount of energy transference that is necessary to keep this drive cool. 
they're not going to get super hot. They're not processors, but they do generate a decent amount of energy. One other thing I want you to note is there are different spacings on the motherboard for different size drives. This one right here, I would say, has become the de facto size. Now, if you recall, there was a set of screws inside of the motherboard. It is time to get those out. Because when we slide this in place, you saw how I aligned it first. Give it a little push. It doesn't require much. As we bring it down, you can see where the screw would logically go in. Now they are starting to replace this kind of mechanism that holds these down. But in most motherboards that you're going to get, it's going to be a screw that physically holds this drive down. You can use the heat sink if you so desire, if you want to hold it down that way. That will work. It's just not going to be as secure as if you put the screw in there like you're kind of supposed to. Now, if you want to be super, super helpful for yourself in the future, while you have your case in this kind of configuration, you can go ahead and screw down several of these just so that you'll have them in the future. So there's spaces on this motherboard to put one here and to put one here. And so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to install two sets of screws because I have the ability to have two sets of NVMe drives. I'm going to do the bottom one first just so that you can somewhat see. It's hard to get the angle so that you guys are able to see, but this is this is just a common screw. There's nothing fancy. There's nothing super about it. One trick I do have for you, if you back off a screw right to the point that it clicks, you know you're at the top of the screw head for the actual part that's going to hold the screw down. And then you can start screwing, and most of the time you will catch it as a straight drive at that point. All right, so I'm going to hold this down with one finger. I'm going to bring my screw over. Going backwards. Clicked. And now I'm screwing down. And there we are, just like that. So now our NVMe is installed. Let's get the heatsink itself installed as well. We'll pull off this protective film, align accordingly. You see how I'm lining up this hole, and then I'm going to try to align this next hole next to it. Not perfectly straight. There it is. So I'm not going to screw that one all the way down until I get the other one attached because I do need a little bit of flexibility to find the screw hole. And now that it's ready, I'm going to go back to the other side, tighten it down, one final turn, one final turn. We are ready to go ahead and turn this on, and we have a full working computer. If we attach a monitor to the motherboard itself, we will boot into the BIOS. We will pass the RAM check. We can install Windows. We could do whatever we wanted to do. All of the major components have been installed and are present. We have a working computer. And at this point is one of those points that I would test and make sure all of those things are correct. I would plug it in, set it up, just to give me an understanding if all of the things I've put in work, and then move on to the next components. 